In this tutorial we'll be looking at some very basic color correction concepts which are not inherent to Nuke but rather global concepts. We'll do this by using the Masi image with a uh, linear ramp at the bottom and the slice tool gizmo which will be provided with this tutorial so you can have a play with this. The slice tool gizmo was put together with an expression provided by Ben Pierre so thanks Ben for the help. What it does is it simply analyzes a random slice across your image and plots it into a histogram on the right side so it's quite handy to analyze your image. So let's reset that to analyze the first scan line, the linear gradient and have a look at the multiply node to start with. When you adjust the multiply node you see that incoming bright pixels will be affected most by the multiplication while dark pixels pretty much stay locked down. So using a multiplication is not going to contaminate your blacks too much. Quite often you'll stumble across a multiplication in form of a parameter called gain or exposure. In fact, let's have a look at Nuke's exposure tool. And you'll see even though we're dealing with f-stops, printer lights, film densities and Cineon values now, what happens under the hood is still the same thing. Now let's have a look at the add. Add or plus also often called offset, simply adds a constant value to the entire image, no matter if the pixels are dark or light. It'll still be lifted by the same amount. This usually makes it very obvious if you're accidentally color correcting a pre-multiplied image. Let's have a look at that case. So this is a pre-multiplied element with an alpha channel that has been multiplied into the color. And you can see how it darkens the RGB here in the transparent areas already. If I put this on top of a background and then have a color correction like an add in between, you'll see that it will actually contaminate your whole comp. And that's because a pre-multiplied element already has color and transparencies mixed together and you need to decouple those two to be able to color correct properly. So what we'll be doing is using an unpremult node which restores full color in the transparencies, do our color correction and then re-pre-multiply the image to reintroduce the transparency. And now we can look at the comp and safely play with our color correction without destroying our alpha channel. While this is most noticeable with the add node, it's really generally very wise to only color correct unpre-multiplied elements. And because it's such a common concept, Nuke provides a shortcut in case you only use one color correcting node and that's the unpremult by checkbox. You can simply choose your alpha channel here and Nuke will do the unpremultiplying before and the repremultiplying after the correction for you. Same thing. So back to our test patch, let's have a look at the gamma node. The gamma node acts on the midtones kind of like a rubber band. It keeps 0 and 1 in place while lifting or darkening your midtones. What's important to understand here is that everything beyond 0 or 1, like your super brights, will actually start wandering into the opposite direction. To see this, let me bring up a sampler node. The sampler node kind of does the same thing as our gizmo here, except it plots a, um, a keyframed curve, which lets us see the super brights. And uh, we'll attach that just like the slice tool. And then we'll go into a rectangle, which draws the ramp down here and we'll make this ramp go from 0 to 5 rather than 0 to 1 like so. Now let's go ahead and sample the curve and now we'll be playing with the gamma corrector and see what happens. Let me reset this for now and sample. So this is our unmodified curve so now the incoming value of 1 is just about here and if I increase the gamma you'll see that all the midtones come up when I resample, re but everything above one actually comes down, which is quite counterintuitive. And if you do a harsh lowering of the gamma, like so, your super bright values will just explode. So it's really important to understand that and uh, find a workaround for that. The most obvious workaround for this would be using a color lookup. So let me just swap that out here. So using a color lookup like so, you can obviously add your control points any way you want and move it around to adjust your midtones like so. And you can already see you'll have the same problem that your 
super brights wander into the opposite direction. The way I deal with it, there's multiple ways, but what I usually do is I create an anchor point just above one at let's say 1.01 .01 in X and 1.01 .01 in Y, like so. And now that we've got an anchor point right above the uh, white point, I can now adjust my midpoint like so without affecting my super brights too much.